With these five compositing tricks, I'm gonna show you how to make any explosion look amazing in After Effects. I'm gonna jump straight into the tricks that make these actually look like they were filmed in camera. That is lens flares, lens dust, real life heat distortion, light wrapped edges, so when it explodes, the light oozes onto your skin, and general motion blur. And before we get started, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. So here in After Effects, we have me and my friend Alyssa running away from an explosion. And as you can see, like it looks good, but it could look better. First up is your average light wrap. And if we look at this footage, the explosion is doing nothing to our character's edges. There's a free plugin from Production Create called Light Wrap. And if we take our masked out characters that are in front of the explosion, if we go up to effects and presets and type in create, you'll see create light wrap right here. What we're gonna do first guys is hit pre-malt background and then on background layer we can select your explosion layer. If we crank up the exposure and the background blur you can see that now we're creating light that's leaking onto our characters and when you zoom in and go frame by frame you can see how much that's adding. This is with the light wrap this is without it. This is super quick. If you don't want to download an extra plugin, I'll show you how to do it native to After Effects. Let's duplicate our characters running. Let's solo it and right click and go to layer styles and do inner glow. We can recreate our own light wrap effect by taking inner glow and scaling it up. Unsolo the layer and we can use the eyedropper tool to pick a color in the explosion. You can change the opacity and the size to fit the light wrap that you want. Um, and we've duplicated this layer so we can create a mask around where the explosion is happening in the background. Because you can see right now it's um, affecting their shoes and the explosion is nowhere near that. So create your mask, do a big feather, and just over the course of the scene, track this mask onto where the light is coming from. And you can just keyframe the mask opacity to ease this effect in if you're choosing the layer styles route. And so that is light wraps. Next in the process of making this look like it was filmed in camera is light flares. For me, I use Red Giant's No Light Factory. If I go up to layer, new, and I create a black solid, can name this light flare. If I put this on top of everything, type in no light factory and drag this onto my light flare clip, I can set it to screen and put it over top of my explosion. And with no light factory, you can kind of pick and choose what lens flares you like. And I'm gonna choose this one. It looks very explosion-y. So if we solo this layer, you can see what the lens flare looks like. And with no light factory, you can come up to the top and use light source location to track where your light flare is. So frame by frame, go through and track your light flare onto your explosion. I have this beautiful meteorite that causes the ground to explode. You can already see right here just how much that adds. <laughs> so we have it come down and then maybe right here, we'll have the light flare kind of come up a little bit. And how I'll animate this light flare is I'll have the brightness keyframed really bright until we hit the ground. So I'll keyframe, it'll get a little dark. And then as the explosion comes out, I'll keyframe the brightness and the scale of this light flare to kind of ooze into the whole scene. And you can see as the explosion turns to dust, you have this super ugly artifact left. So you'll just keyframe the brightness all the way down by the end of it. This could honestly use two different light flares. So I'll duplicate this light flare layer and I'll go for this generic little orb right here. This light flare is cool because it has this big artifact in the middle. So right here as the explosion starts to explode, I'll keyframe the scale from like zero, to maybe like five, let's see what that looks like. Oh, that's awesome. And then we'll scale the brightness down over time so we don't have this ugly artifact. And bam, there you have your light flares. Next is lens dust. If you've ever taken a picture or video yourself, if you've accidentally pointed your camera lens at something bright, there's a chance that all the dust on your sensor or on your lens got lit up as well. So we have a fun opportunity here to add some even more foreground compositing. We can add some like dust start to light up on the screen. I'll just go to Google and type in lens dust. Or you know what, I'll type in lens dirt. I like that. This one looks really nice. It's got a lot of interesting textures in it. Let's save it. So if we drag our lens dust into After Effects, let's orient it to fill our scene. And we'll set this to overlay. Just kidding, we're gonna set it to screen. And to have the lens kind of 
match the color of the explosion, we're gonna go up to effects and presets, bring in tint and put that on the lens dust. We're gonna map the whites to this bright orange. You can see right here that it blends in really well like that. And so what we can do is keyframe the opacity so as it's getting brighter, the lens dust comes on and then fade that away slowly. Oh, to me that adds so much impact. Honestly, I feel like I could even make the um, lens dirt brighter. I'll set it to add. Oh, I love that, but maybe I'll stretch out how long the opacity is. So maybe lower the opacity once you've made it actually brighter. I'm actually gonna duplicate this lens dust and maybe put it and rotate it in a few places around my scene so I can kind of customize where I want this lens dust. We can create masks to kind of stack it to create our own custom vignette of dust. So when we watch it back, ooh, it looks incredible. So this is with the lens dust. This is without the lens dust. Fourth is heat distortion. This one's crazy when I see people leave this out of explosions. Have you yourself ever seen a fire or a plane taking off where the heat is coming from? There's this weird air distortion. It's because heat changes air, I don't know, science. Video Copilot has a plugin called heat distortion that lets you do just exactly this. Or you could use Red Giant's heat wave. So what we'll do is we'll create a new adjustment layer, rename it to heat distortion, and we'll put this in front of um, our explosion and behind our characters. If you come up to effects and presets and type in heat distortion and drag it onto the clip. We can watch the background in real time and see what's happening. It's distorting everything and it looks awful. So what we're gonna do is create a mask on this uh, adjustment layer just around where the explosion is. And we will crank the feather up and we'll change the distortion amount. I like to lower the heat amount because when it's big like this, it kind of looks like the fire is close up. So we'll lower the heat amount and we'll make the noise scale actually a little big and turn the distortion maybe down to like six. And what we're gonna do is keep keyframe this uh, mask to follow where the fire is. So I'll create a keyframe at mask path. And once you have your heat distortion uh, adjustment layer following your explosion, oh, it's so satisfying when you watch this part back. <laughs> I love watching it in slow motion after all these effects. And now if we look at the background, you can see that the fire is distorting everything around it. This is almost the perfect explosion. All that's left, guys, is motion blur. To force all these pixels to interact with each other, we can use a plugin called Real Smart Motion Blur. This is AI generated blur. It's assuming how all the pixels should interact based off the science of real motion blur. And if we watch that back, it sounds crazy, but it almost lowers the quality a little bit frame by frame because it's a little blurrier. But in this way, if people like zoom in on anything, it all looks like it's tied together. And after the real smart motion blur, you're done. Or you can keep playing around with it as much as you want. But these are the five best compositing tricks for animating explosions and after effects. Guys, I have lots of super fun and cool nerdy work like this on my Instagram. I am Los Angeles' Star Lord. And all of this explosive goodness is brought to you by Squarespace. From online stores and marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform. Let's say you want to run a successful business, you have to sign up for Squarespace. They allow you to make an online store. So if you have a product, you can sell it there. If you make tables, like epoxy resin, those pretty ones, put it on Squarespace. They make it incredibly easy too because they're award-winning designer templates. I mean, these are gorgeous. Look at these bags. Look at these jewelry. It's presented so professionally. Professionally, I, I kind of want to buy it. Which leads me to my next amazing point about Squarespace. They do custom merch. They'll even ship it for you and handle the inventory. So if you ever wanted to create a connection with your audience, by making physical products, you have to do it with Squarespace. And it's all custom merch. So from the design process to shipping and handling, they can handle all of it. And lastly, if you're a content creator and you want to maybe monetize on some extra bonus content, well, Squarespace has member-only areas. You can put your exclusive bonus content that won't be shared on any any of your public profiles in the members areas so you can start monetizing your audience for them to come pay to see your bonus content. Your fans will love it, they'll get extra stuff, you'll get extra spending money, and I'll be really happy for you. <laughs> so if all this sounds amazing, which it is, go to squarespace.com slash willcarmack to get 10% off your first website or domain. I really hope you like this tutorial. And where there's a will, there's a way. My name is Will, and have a nice day.